Hey, what's up? My name is Asia Psycho, or Toys Number 98. So in my last video on Ascension items, the one where I talked about how to get guaranteed Ascension items from certain servant and loots that become available after you clear Okeanos, I said that I was going to make a video right after that talking about the new revamp dailies that you all should know about by now since it's been a week since they came out roughly by the time this video gets posted. Well, right after I made that last video, I thought to myself, why not just wait a week? get gameplay of all the dailies so that I can show them to you physically in video format, and then go in depth about the drop rates themselves and which dailies are the best to farm which items. So that's what this video is going to be all about. In this video, I'm going to be talking about percentages and numbers a lot, just like the other how to find ascension items video that I made. And you might be wondering, well, where are you pulling all these numbers from if you're not just pulling them straight out of your ass? Well, the good folks over at the FGO Wiki have been working on compiling drop stats for all these new revamp dailies for NAFGO ever since they came out uh, a week ago, and have been working on a stat sheet to store all that info. You might even see me on there too for some of them, so this is where I'm getting all them. The link to the spreadsheet will be down in the description below for your viewing pleasure. Disclaimer about the spreadsheet's current information, however, since it is only a week old, the sample sizes of the drop rates for the items that can be farmed from the revamp dailies might not be too big, so the drop rates themselves might not be as accurate as you want them to be, but it's still something to work with nonetheless. Before we continue with the video, I'd like to take some time to shamelessly plug myself and tell you that I plan on live streaming Fate Grand Order on a regular basis now that I've finally figured out how to stream the game. This means that from here on out, I'll be live streaming all my future salty whaling sessions so that you can all hop into the stream and laugh at me while I invoke my E-Luck. But unlike other FGO YouTubers like Zis, Not a Whale, and Soberoni, who all stream here on YouTube, I've got my own stream set up over on Twitch with the same name as my YouTube, ToastNumper98, so if you haven't already, make sure to click the Twitch link in the description below and follow me so that you know when I go live with some fake gameplay. I'll also upload a short video notifying those of you who subscribe to the channel if I've gone live on, on Twitch so that you don't miss a stream. Anyways, now that we've gotten the shameless plug out of the way, let's talk about how the revamp dailies work, since they're obviously a lot more different than the old ones we used to have. Because if you recall, the old dailies lumped classes together and divided them into what I like to call servant fights, where you could farm monuments, and monster hunts, where you could farm rare ascension items that you couldn't get anywhere else. The revamp dailies now give each and every single class their own specific day of the week, during which you can farm pieces, monuments, and blue, red, and gold gems of that specific class to make it a lot easier to go after the ascension or skill upgrade items that you want. The schedule of the revamp dailies goes something like this. Sabers are on Saturday NA time and Sunday U time. Archers are on Sunday slash Monday. Lancers are on Monday slash Tuesday. Berserkers are on Tuesdays slash Wednesdays. Riders are on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Casters are on Thursdays slash Fridays, and Assassins are on Fridays slash Saturdays. This is a quick at-a-glance overview of all the items that can be farmed during the new dailies, along with the schedule that I was just talking about. A few things notice here that I'd like to point out. If there are some of you out there who've already taken a peek at the revamped daily lists on the FGO wiki and you're still wondering why the new dailies aren't dropping certain ascension items like Forbidden Pages, Homunculus Babies, and Eternal Gears, well, the simple reason for that is because those certain ascension items haven't been quote-unquote officially introduced into the game yet. These items need to be made farmable in singularity nodes first before they can get included into revamped uh, daily rotation. So in case there are some of you who are really looking forward to farming the caster daily for your forbidden pages, don't worry, I was one of them. That's why you didn't see any page drops last Friday or Saturday. Another thing that I want to point out is the fact that now, since the daily schedule goes on a class rotation basis, in which every day features a new class, it's now even more important than before to make sure that you have the time to farm the items that you need for a certain class on their featured day. Before, with the old dailies, if you missed out on, for example, the Saber class pieces or monuments, you'd only need to wait two or five days before the night class servant fight daily would show up again, depending on which one you missed on the, on the week. But with these new revamp dailies, if you miss a certain day that you want to farm items for, you'll have to wait a whole week before that daily comes around again. So it's now more important than ever to make sure that you give yourself time to farm for whatever you need on whatever day you're looking for. Now, the good thing 
is that many of these revamped dailies do feature a lot of the same ascension items such as fangs, seeds, feathers, and bones. And in the case of Void Sus, you can still get them in any daily still. But the bad thing is that certain other items like Lantern, Snake Eyes, and the top tier ascension items, the Talons, Scales, and Hearts, are still only available on their respective days. And the last thing I wanted to point out, which is the most obvious one actually, is that now instead of being divided into only three tiers like the old dailies were, the revamped dailies are now divided into four tiers just like the Ember Gathering and the QP Gathering quests that are also in Caldea Gate. This gives you more options if you're looking for different session items as the drop rates for items featured in whatever particular class daily that's available for the day do vary from tier to tier. Also, keep in mind that these new revamps also only take one run to receive the completion reward of Mana Prisms, just like the other daily types, and unlike the old dailies that needed you to run them three frickin' times just to obtain their Mana Prism reward. So, now that we've covered the basics, let's get started, shall we? Originally, I was planning on going over each and every single daily's drop rates for all the ascension items that can be farmed, but then I realized that not only would that take me fucking forever to cover them in their entirety, but also you as the viewer will be bored to have to sleep listening to me rattle off numbers and percentages like you're stuck back in math class again, which I'm sure very few of you would want, unless you were one of those freaks in school who actually liked math. So instead, I'm going to summarize which dailies you should farm that have, so far, the best drop rates for each of the ascension items that can be farmed, and whether or not it's worth grinding out dailies to get them as opposed to just farming them from uh, free quests instead. Let's begin with the silver tier ascension items, so naturally we'll start with hero proofs. Recall from my earlier video that the enemy type that drops these are zombie soldiers and pirates, and they occupy the knight classes and with Okeanos, the berserker class, which means that from the revamped dailies you can farm them during the saber, archer, lancer, and berserker days. And your best bet of getting one is during a run is the Berserker 40 AP daily with a 21.87% drop rate. This still pales in comparison to the 60% drop rate in the first node in Okeanos, the pirate ship node, so you really shouldn't be farming these new dailies if you're looking for hero proofs in particular. Just think of any hero proof drops that you get during any of these runs as nice bonuses instead. Evil Bones are up next. Remember that the skeletons drop these, and they only occupy the knight classes, which means that they can only be farmed during saber, archer, and lancer days. Also take note of the fact that because skeletons are considered low tier enemies, they only show up during the first two AP quests, specifically the 10 AP and the 20 AP, for all three days. And your best drop rate is 27.78% in the 20 AP archer daily. But again, just like Hero Proofs, there are much better drop rates in the free quests in Fuyuki and in Germania and Septum, so I wouldn't really recommend farming the dailies for Evil Bones if bones are the only thing that you're looking for. Dragon Fangs are next on the list. The Dragon Tooth Warriors and Wyverns drop these, like I mentioned before in my earlier video, and they show up mainly during the Rider and Assassin dailies, since the Rider daily is filled with wi Wyverns and the Assassin daily is filled with Assassin class Dragon Tooth Warriors. But you can also find Dragon Tooth Warriors who spawn during the 10 AP Archer and Saber dailies too, but their drop rates for Fangs are so low that they're more or less negligible. The best drop rate for Fangs is 54.24% during the 30 AP Rider daily, which Keep in mind that the sample size listed on the spreadsheet is much smaller than that of the 40 AP daily which has a 51.87% drop rate. So if you like to farm the 40 AP one to farm for other ascension items at the same time that's perfectly fine too. It's also a great drop rate even when you compare it to the 50% drop rate at Wyvern Island in Okeanos despite costing a lot more AP. So the 40 AP Rider Daily is perhaps the best place to farm Fangs because you can also farm for many other Ascension items at the same time without really compromising your Fang drop chance at all. That does it for the Silver Tier Ascension items, now let's move on to the Mid Tier Gold Ascension items, the ones that start dropping from Gold Boxes that is, like I mentioned before. Let's start with Voids Dust since that's the most common one of the bunch. You can get them from any daily because Shadow Servants spawn in all tiers of the dailies and they're the enemy type who drops you these. The best drop rate is 30.10% during the 40 AP Lancer daily, and while there is a marginally bigger 30.11% drop rate during the Caster 20 AP daily, again, the 40 AP Lancer daily just has a much bigger sample size, which makes its drop rate a lot more reliable. The interesting thing about Voids Dust is that the dailies still have a generally better drop rate 
than in the, the drop rates in the free quests, but unfortunately, as weird as this sounds, the drop rate for Void's Dust was a lot higher during the old dailies, where the 30AP server fight dailies, as I like to call them, had about a 57% drop rate per run, or to get one per run. Or run. So if you didn't farm any of these during uh, the old dailies when they were still active, just know that with these new revamp dailies, it's a little bit harder to farm them reliably until we get more free quests that have a lot better drop rates for Void Dust. Moving on to seeds, you can farm seeds during the Night Class days in addition to the Assassin Class day. The Werewolf enemy type or the Bronze tier Amazons drop these, and because they're considered mid-tier enemies, they will not show up during any of the 10 AP dailies for the aforementioned days, but will show up for everything else. Your best drop rate is 21.61% during the 40 AP Saber Daily, but the rates are very similar for all the other 40 AP quests of the other eligible days too, so don't feel bad if you want to farm seeds on those other days too. And the 40 AP drop rates themselves aren't that much worse than the seed drop rate in Okeanos Free Quests, so farming seeds from these revamped dailies isn't a bad idea if that's what you want to do. Phoenix Fed is up next. You can farm these from the Silver or Gold tier Amazons, like I mentioned before, who show up during the night class days, but they only show up during 38p and 48p quests. Apparently, according to the spreadsheet, it is possible to get feathers during the 20p archer daily, but since no one's ever gotten one from there yet, let's just assume that you can't get one from there for now. Your best drop rate is 17.45% during the 38p saber daily, which is by far the best drop rate for feathers in the game thus far. So if you need feathers and want the highest drop chance that you can get, the 38p saber daily is the way to go. Now let's talk about octuplet crystals. Only golem enemies drop these as usual, and since golems so far have only been one class, the berserkers, naturally they show up only during berserker day, but in all four quests. Your best drop rate is 13.75% during the 20 AP Berserker Daily, but again, as with the case with other Ascension items before this, the 40 AP Berserker Daily not only has only a slightly worse drop rate at 13.31%, but also has a much, much larger sample size than the 20 AP Daily, so I would say that the 40 AP Daily would be the safer option. Compare this to the 11% drop rate in the Okeanos Free Quests, and I would say that the 40, 40 AP Berserker Daily would still be a little bit better, because even though you do need to spend a lot more AP, you do also have the opportunity to farm for many other useful items along with the crystals. Now on to Snake Eyes, or Snake Jewels. Not a lot to talk about here, but again, just like before, only the Lamia and Naga enemies drop these, and since they're all casters, naturally they only show up during Caster Daily in all the quests, that is. The best drop rate is 28.08% during the 40 AP caster daily, which is much better than the 16% at the ship graveyard node in the Okeanos, so if you're in need of some more snake jewels, look no further. Next up, ghost lanterns. Since only the ghost enemies can drop them, and since all ghost enemies are assassins, put two and two together, and you guessed it, they can only show up during assassin dailies. And as with the case with the snake jewels, the 40 AP daily has the best drop rate for lanterns at 18.72%, but seeing that the drop rate is still better at the Stormy Seas node in Okeanos at 22%, maybe the 40 AP daily is the best place to farm these. Unless you're also looking to farm red and gold assassin jets at the same time, which actually you most likely might be, seeing that before these revamped dailies, it was next to frickin' impossible to farm red and gold assassin gems. And now for everyone's favorite rare ascension items, starting with talons, which are still only dropped by the chimera type enemies who are all still berserkers. Your best drop rate is 11.66% chance during the 40 AP berserker daily. It's still very low, but it's still more than double the rate that it used to be during the old daily, so there's that. With scales, which are still only dropped by Fafnir, well technically the evil wyvern enemy also has a chance to drop a scale, but it's so astronomically low that for all intents and purposes, Fafnir is still going to be your main supplier of scales. Your best drop rate is 7.8% during, you guessed it again, the 40 AP Rider Daily. And for hearts, which are still only dropped by the demon guy, your best drop rate is 7.95%, basically 8%, from the 40 AP Caster Daily. Although, do take note of the 6.3% drop rate during the 30 AP uh, Caster Daily in case AP usage is a concern for you. One thing that I'd like to add here is that unlike the old dailies where the Talon, Scale, and Heart drops were very low and rare, <laughs> the revamped dailies still have a relatively low drop rate for these three items, not necessarily because of how low the drop rate 
for these items are, but more because of how rarely the enemies themselves spawn. Because when they do spawn, they actually have a decent chance of dropping you their rare ascension items. It's their actual appearance, their spawn rate that's rare, if that makes any sense. In my own personal experience, when they do show up, it's about less than a 50-50% chance as to whether or not they'll give you their rare ascension items, but just like what they say in those prescription drug uh, commercials, your own experience may vary. And finally, let's wrap up this video by talking about pieces, monuments, and skill gems. When it comes to pieces and monuments, there are a few rules of thumb that generally apply to everyone. You are more or less guaranteed at least one piece from any single 30 AP run, and monuments are now a hell of a lot easier to get with the new 30 AP and 40 AP dailies. Part of the reason why the drop rates on the monuments are so high compared to the old dailies is because it's now much easier to get multiple gold monuments in a single run. If you notice during the boss wave of each of the dailies, there's a chance that the ending boss is joined by another normal servant enemy. Not a shadow servant, but just a normal servant enemy, meaning that if that servant enemy drops a gold box upon being defeated, that's also a guaranteed monument. And as for skill gems, the 10 AP dailies are by far the best sources of blue gems. You're basically guaranteed at least one blue gem each run you make of any 10 AP quest. The same also applies to red gems. If you run any 30 AP daily, you're also basically guaranteed to get at least one red gem. And as for the gold gems, since they're the rarest, the 40 AP dailies are your best bet to get them. But part of the reason why they're still relatively difficult to get compared to the other gems is because gold gems are a gold box drop, naturally. Makes sense, right? Which means that they could instead turn out to be ascension items like Ghost Lantern, Snake Eyes, and Octuple Crystals. And that's the revamp dailies in a nutshell for FGO English, just like my other video on ascension items, since FGO English is still a growing game that will continue expanding and following the Japanese FGO schedule. There's no doubt that this video, too, will become outdated in due time with the inclusion of other ascension items that aren't currently in the game yet, like Homunculus Babies, Forbidden Pages, and Eternal Gears. But until then, this video will have to do. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope this video was informative and helpful to those of you who have watched this far, and until the next video, take care and have fun grinding. Or not, it's really up to you. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.